Let's set up a truss in this video. Now I'm starting from a fresh uh, visual analysis uh, file, nothing in it yet. First thing you want to check is your analysis again. Do you want to do it as a frame or do you want to do it as a truss? If you want to do it as a frame, you need to apply member releases in order to analyze it as a truss, and I'll talk about that later. But we're going to just analyze it as a plain truss. It's just in 2D and it's just a truss. Now, this time I'm actually not going to draw individual members. I could do that, of course, but on the left tab right here in the project manager, there is a collection of wizards uh, for trusses, plates, and tanks, and so on. And so you can look through those and see already what kind of trusses can automatically be generated. Now, in my case here, I'm going to go with the roof truss. Uh, nothing too fancy, just something simple. So I'll double click on this. And the first step in there is picking an origin. I want it at zero. Picking a rotation about the z-axis and I want it horizontal, so we're going to leave it just the way it is. I'm going to go next and I'm going to pick dimensions and you see here 20 feet is going to be my length. The height is going to be 6 feet and the eave overhang I'm actually going to set to zero because if we did eave overhangs then we would have to analyze these as beams and rigidly connect them to the rafters, which we can't do in truss analysis. So I'm going to just leave that as zero. And I'm going to click at next. Panels. It's the number of these panels here. And you see six are shown in this um, little picture here. And we're going to go with four. And I'm just going to say finish. And there's my truss. So at this point, all the geometry is preset. I can now click these guys. They get the default database shape, but other than that, all of these members are set up as truss members. Now let's change the material. Um, we want to analyze this as a 2x6 truss, so I'm going to hold my shift key and select everything. And now you see everything is selected. If you go to the project manager, the problem is that it pre-selects the nodes, but we actually want to change the member property. So I'm going to switch to member. And then you see here, source is database shape type. Uh, right now it's a steel shape, but I'm going to double click on the little ellipses and that gets me into the database. This is where I can then go all the way down here to get wood. There's steel first, there's aluminum, and then there's wood down here. And under NDS wood, um, there are a bunch of different options. I'm just going to go with standard dressed, uh, dimension lumber, 2x6. Of course, you can use whatever. You need to use but you see already all of the shape properties come into the analysis this way all right now i can highlight individual members and i see what happens here you also see that the material has been preset to douglas for large if you wanted to change this double click there and change it now in order to be able to analyze this i do need restraints so i'm going to highlight my left node i'm going to make it a pin joint I'm going to highlight my right node. I'm going to need uh, vertical support because the, this is where my um, truss rests on the structure. Everything in between is connected as a pin because this is a truss analysis, but it um, none of these get any kind of supports because there are no walls supporting them. All of these supports only happen where um, there's a literal support. Okay. If you remember, uh, the self-weight is al already added to the dead load load case, and so that's why we now have the geometry ready, we have the um, supports ready, and we actually do have some loads in there through the dead load load case. So we can actually go ahead and analyze this, and I'm going to click on result view to do just that. Now in result view, Again, what you get is the deflected shape. It's always a good idea to double check if that makes sense, because um, if you know <laughs> if any of these points haven't moved um, since they didn't get a support, then something was wrong here. The outermost points didn't move the outermost nodes, at least vertically, which makes sense because I supported those. Then 
um, in terms of the deflection that you see here, there's a little bit of bending deflection because the self-weight, of course, is distributed along the length of each of these members. They didn't add any additional loads, so that's why you see that happening. All right, now let's take a look at the result. Go back to filter, analysis type is all all right. Displaced, I'm actually gonna turn that off so that I can just look at the results. Member results, you see now, um, because we are in truss analysis, we can basically only get axial force from this. Axial uh, stresses and any of the other ones, you would have to do a um, you would have to do a, a, a plain frame analysis. Again, we want to we could do this as colors, but diagram is kind of nice. Um, and then we can turn on the reactions as well. And so at this point, we do get all the numbers that we want. If we do have reactions here, we do have um, individual uh, axial forces. And you see, of course, very little happens in the diagonals. There's a lot around the outermost cords, and you get the actual um, forces. Minus, of course, is compression. Uh, positive forces are in um, our intention. If you want to, you can of course always check your picture view and this should now properly reflect the fact that these are all 2 by 6s Alright, the next video I'm going to show you how you can analyze something like this or some kind of a um, frame truss combination as a plain frame. Um, which means that you do need member releases for everything that is connected using a pin.